Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the 13 apps that I use on my Mac that help me with my productivity. So I'm someone who loves to dive in and get into a state of deep work, and these apps help me do that. Some of them are more on the productivity side, some are more on the flow state generation side. Um, so without further ado, let's dive right in and check out these apps. The first app is called Numi. Uh, basically, it's a small note-taking app that allows you to organize uh, just plain text, but also put in things like, um, well, it's got some examples here, like $9 in euros. Let's try uh, 55 kilograms in pounds. So there you go. So um, where I find it really useful, if I'm just adding things up and I want to keep a record of them, like 55 plus 99 plus 2.25, and I get a running total. Uh, one of the annoying things about the Mac that I absolutely hate is that you've got the Calc app that allows you to run a calculator. And when I used to use Windows, I used to have one there, I'd do some calculations, and then I'd open another one. But of course, it only has one uh, one version, one instance of the calculator. There is a way in the command line that you can faff about with it, but I find using something like this really powerful because I get a, a bit of a history as to what I've worked out, and it saves me from going into like Google Sheets or something to itemize things that I want to add up together. So it's really nice, uh, really appreciate this app, um, and it's pretty cool because it can do conversions without really having to, to think about it. So that's new me. Next one is the Workspaces app. Now this one here I use uh, really for client project work where I want to organize their um, their things into different different um, workspaces. And basically you can create these uh, workspaces. So if I had a YouTube workspace, I could then, oh, I didn't mean to click that. I could then create um, items in here. So I could have a file, I can link to an individual file, I could link to a folder. So for example, um, shared uh, items, and then let's say uh, this folder here, uh, so I need to drag the folder in there. Uh, let's say I've got on my system here, I've got a shared folder, just drag that in, uh, like so. And now, if I, I don't know which window I've ended up in there. So now I've got um, this shared folder here. I can launch that when I start my machine or click the start button for this project. So up here, then I could go YouTube. These are all the things. And if I just go start, that'll open up that. So if I'm say working on a video project and I wanna have a finder window, I wanna open up say um, uh, DaVinci Resolve, for example, I want to open up a website. It's really powerful for that. If you're into things like data and analytics, you've got Google Analytics and various other tools. You can open up all these website applications. If you're a developer, you can open up terminal windows. So it's really powerful to create your workflows and just start them in one go, hit the start button. And of course, you can organize different types of client projects, different types of personal projects, um, all of that in one, uh, one set of configuration. So that's really cool. I've been using this one for quite a while um, and I really appreciate it. Next one is Things 3. Um, so Things is a to-do list app. And why I like this is because, um, quite frankly, it's because of their hotkey, if I'm honest. I could be in any app and I could say, uh, oh, I've got to remember to get the milk out. Get the milk out kind of thing. Uh, whatever that means, buy milk. Uh, we freeze our milk, so that's how we would get it, why we would get it out. So, and then that you could say, well, I need to do that today, and then you can tick it off, and there it goes. Uh, you have things like upcoming, calendar, anytime. So if you've got some kind of longer running things that are like, I need to do it, but I don't need to do it on a specific day, you can go in your someday, anytime. Um, uh, your logbook is just the activities that you've done, and then you can create different lists and project areas yourself just to organize things based on the types of things you're working on. So if you're working on a project and you want to combine like your tasks together, it's really good. Um, because I run my own business, uh, I like to itemize all the things I need to do when I'm doing the accounts and just basically go into a deep work session and just go through it, bring in these transactions, reconcile this, budget that, you know, invoice this, et cetera. Uh, the stuff I absolutely hate doing, but, uh, you know, if you run your own business, it has to be done. Okay, next up is Loom. Uh, let's see if I've got this one. I might need to create an account. I'm using a separate user account on my machine just to get 
clean state of things. But Loom is a um, is a screen sharing app that once you log into, you can uh, record your screen. So let's go to Loom uh, Loom app, and I'll show you what it is on the home page. Um, basically, you have they got any interesting videos? Uh, it doesn't really show much about about it in use here. Uh, well, actually, here's an idea. So the idea is that you will say, I want to record my screen and get a, an overlay of myself. You can do that. I won't do that because I'm uh, recording already on this screen. So that'll just screw things up. And then you get the toolbars down here. You can pause it. You can stop it. You can delete it. Once you've recorded your video, it goes automatically uploads into the Loom account. And I think on the free version, you get up to five minutes of video. And uh, yeah, let's look at their pricing and see. So for free, you can get up to 100 videos. Um, and I think they auto delete once you go over 100, five minutes in length. You can basically do camera and screen. So if you are creating a product or you want to share something with the team and you want a bit of a personal touch, kind of like what I do with this YouTube video, I've got my, my kind of talking head and then what we're looking at. Uh, as well. It's basically the same. And then you can drag the talking head around because it fills the entire screen and might obstruct what you're looking at. It's really nice if you if you just want to create something really quickly and then send it to a colleague or to someone else without having to worry about um, like where you're going to store it, how you're going to you know compress it down into, into something. So that's Loom. Now the Magnet app. This app here uh, allows you to organize your windows, which is kind of cool. So for example, left two thirds, and it'll organize the, that window into my left two thirds. But what's really nice about it is I can, when I drag my windows around, if you use windows, this will be quite familiar where you can just snap them to the different parts of the screen. So this is really good if you wanna do a side by side, maybe you've got YouTube running and you want to uh, maybe take some notes on that YouTube or you're working on something else, you just snap them snap side by side. Uh, something I take for granted on Windows, um, but uh, this works really seamlessly um, with uh, as an add-on into the Mac. Next up is the Unsplash app. Now, I love this app. Uh, basically, when you see the same backdrop every day, it gets a bit boring. I like things a little more motivational. I like things a little more beautiful. Then you can use the Unsplash desktop wallpaper app. So you can choose to say launch it when it starts up, update all your screens. I've got a multi-monitor set up here. When do you want to update? Daily, weekly, manually. And let's say, let's get started. That's what happens. So here's now an image. I just go set as wallpaper. And basically it downloads it from Unsplash and then replays your wallpaper. And if you didn't like that one, you can just cycle through them until you say, right, this one looks really nice. When I'm recording videos, I like to sometimes cycle through and get something that sits, uh, fits the scene that I'm talking about. Um, so if I was talking about uh, getting into flow, I might do something with flowing rivers. If I was talking about uh, the hustle, I'd probably do a city kind of thing, just to, just to basically complement what I'm talking about. So that is the Unsplash app. Next up, we have the Tempo app. Now, I won't show you this one running because it will have my personal emails, and I certainly do not want that shown online, uh, but essentially it sits over the top of your Gmail accounts. Uh, one of the beautiful things is that it can combine multiple, multiple accounts into one view and it creates basically the perfect inbox zero workflow. You don't get access to your emails until you say when they become available. So you don't have any distraction. You're not hovering your email. They will not be there until, until that time. You can override that if you want to. And uh, then you go through two states. One, to sort your emails, decide whether you want to add it to your to-do list or whether you want to be reminded of it or if you want to archive it, delete it, um, or just a quick reply. So that you then just rattle through that and that stops your emails just ballooning with lots of unread emails. And then you go into your uh, your um, processing mode, uh, which allows you to take those and, and basically have a focus mode on answering those emails. This is their homepage. This is what it looks like. It is very minimal. You know, you're not distracted by beautiful fonts. You can't change the font. It's just plain text. It's all about focusing on getting the job done rather than being distracted with all the with all the other things. So you have a nice composed window, um, and then this here is the sorting. So you basically take 
you, you basically iterate through one email at a time, decide whether you want to to do, keep, remind, archive. And the cool thing is if you press the, I think it's the alt slash option key over the archive, that will flip to delete. So when you get a lot of newsletters that you just, you know, you're not going to do delete. And then you get the quick unsubscribe or accept to client if it's a meeting invite. Really nice. This is then what your inbox looks like, which is really cool. So you've gone through your, your sorting mode. They come into here. Uh, these are the things that you need to action. And then you go into focus mode which then allows you to review that, write your carefully thoughts about reply, and then send an archive done. I really love this app. It's the only app that has kept me consistently in an inbox zero state. Um, so that's, yeah, it's really, um, uh, basically it's worth its weight in, in gold, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's the Tempo app. Next is the Bear app. So when it comes to note taking, um, I absolutely love the Bear app. Uh, I love its continuous experience across iPad and iPhone. I use it a lot on my iPhone just for taking quick notes. Um, I use it on the iPad if I'm watching a YouTube video and I want to split screen it and take, take notes there. And then if I'm on the phone, like if I'm using Skype to call and I just want to take notes, um, I can create them here. So yeah, here is a note. And it's got a really powerful tagging, so folder note, so where you can organize those into folders. Um, I think oh, there's a there's a hotkey to bring up the different. Uh, there's a folder view. Let's see. I haven't done this in a while because this is a fresh view uh, of this. But if I go to show to show untagged, that's what that does. No, that didn't do it. Show all notes. Uh, show notes tags. There we go. Right. There, there's some hotkeys to do that. I don't. I sometimes use the hotkeys if I just want to focus on one note. And then uh, because I created a used a slash notation folder note, so you could say um, uh, using tags for status to do is really really good. And then in your uh, in your notes here, you've got basically. Uh, I think they do something called the icon. So if I go uh, activity gym, let's say, oh, that's for activity. Not that it really matters. Uh, do they? See, they put the little icon. Little touches like that are really nice where they, they know roughly what these things mean and then they put a nice graphical icon next to that. That's really cool. Uh, but you can drop uh, content in there like images and other things as well. And it uses a markdown format, so you can put heading, um, um, bold, uh, and it's this, uh, it's a nice note taking app because it's visually, you just edit and see at the same time what it does. So yeah, and then that will sync, if you pay for the subscription, that will sync across your all your devices. So I really like this app, um, and it's really fast as well. So that's the Bear app. Uh, next is the Bitwarden app. Um, I've realized that I don't have an account for this on this profile here, but essentially let's have a look at what they say here. It's a password manager. So, you know, we can't deny the fact that we have to deal with our passwords and we can't deny the fact that um, you can't use the same password for everything anymore because, you know, um, if you haven't checked your have I been pawned, uh, you basically, um, you put your email in here and you can see whether your email address has been compromised. And also you can check your password. If you have a password you reuse, you can see whether that's um, in any compromised data out there. So when it comes to passwords, you really want to use a password um, manager. Uh, you, you know, if you go on this journey, you'll probably come across LastPass. I moved away from LastPass um, because they were being more... Uh, basically, you know, the Chrome plugin didn't work, but recently they... Uh, started restricting their free account. Uh, one password is nice, uh, but you have to pay um, monthly, which is there's nothing wrong with that. But but when you get the same thing for free uh, with Bitwarden, then you know it's a no brainer, isn't it? Um, you can use it in the browser, you can use it in the app, you can use it uh, on your mobile device as well. And basically, once you add the Chrome plugin, it will allow you to use Bitwarden to unlock your accounts. You know basically autofill your username and password. You can put folders and things like that. And um, if you want to share passwords, I've not set this up yet, but if you want to share passwords with say family members, 
then I believe that is possible if uh, on the free one you can get up to two users. So if, it's, if you've got a, um, you know, a significant other who you want to share passwords with, then that's a really, really great, great way of doing it. Uh, or maybe I was looking at the business plans there. Family organization, three, three dollars, 33 a month. Um, so yeah, basically check it out if you're looking for a password manager. Uh, and w one thing I recommend is really getting all your passwords organized and consistent because it will save you so much hassle later. Um, and if you can get it synchronized on your phone as well, when you're logging in on your phone, it's really simple. So that's the Bitwarden app. Um, yeah, it just removes the complexity of having to remember passwords. Now we have the Forest app. Uh, I love this app. It's basically a um, procrastination killer. It, it basically locks you from going to other websites that kill time, like Twitter or YouTube or any other any other sites. Primarily, it's a smartphone app that um, st if you basically shut the app and, and go to a different one, you uh, break your focus session. And the goal here is that you want to grow a tree. You say, I want to maybe do a 25 minute you know, distraction free session. And in that time, you grow a tree and the longer you go, the better the tree and you unlock other trees. And I think in their business model, they actually helped plant real trees in the world, which is, which is cool. Uh, but one of the things that's really nice is it has a, a Chrome plugin and you can activate this. You can say what kind of tree you want to grow. And uh, once you've logged in and shared your account, you can then see your garden of trees to um, your forest, essentially, uh, that you've you've grown. And if I hit this button, it will basically prevent me from going to other apps like, oh, well, let's try it. So now I'm in a, in a 25 minute session. And if I try going to Twitter, uh, it will, in theory, maybe I need to be signed into Twitter. This does work, block list mode. Let's, um, I'm, let's try Facebook. Right, we'll try YouTube. There you, uh, yeah, there you go. So if you go to a website that um, hasn't been configured, I think it's because I wasn't logged into Twitter, it wasn't picking it up. Uh, it will say, hold up, your tree is still growing. If I hit give up, that will kill the tree and then I'll have a dead tree in my, my forest. So it's really nice. If you know that you don't want to be distracted for a moment, just start growing a tree and it'll stop, stop you sneaking into being distracted, especially when some of the work you're doing, you end up on, you know, you've got to refer to, uh, refer to looking something up and you end up on medium and then medium links to something else. And you're like, hang on a minute, how did I end up here? Um, it might, it might help you be more mindful in what you do. So that's the forest app. Next one is Brain FM. So uh, we all love music and uh, we all have different music tastes and music can be a great cue for getting into deep work. And Brain FM is a focus music service. Uh, you do pay monthly or yearly for it. And essentially you choose, do I want to go into a focus session, a relaxed session, a sleep session? Um, if you are on your, if you use it on your phone, there's like study sessions as well. And it uses sort of algorithmically generated music not binaural beats, that is different, but uh, essentially creates this cue for your brain to get into a focus mode. I really like it, I really like the music. Um, it's nice just to have there to, um, yeah, to trigger that that cue that, you know, now's the time to be, to be really focusing. And uh, when you go into it, you can say whether you wanna go for like 30 minutes an hour, two hours, or just keep it running. And if you want to use it to go to sleep as well, um, they've got modes for that as well, um, which is cool. So that is Brain FM. And uh, next up, we have Notion. So, Notion, um, if you're not familiar with Notion, it's like a big you know, productivity app in its own right. You create documents, you can put to do lists in it, you can put tables in it, um, you can you know, structure projects in it. So. Uh, it is like a to-do list. You create sub pages, infinite sub pages. Uh, you might want to use it to do some journaling. Uh, you could use it to upload files. So the things I use it for are like organizing like paperwork. I, if I have paperwork that comes in, I'll use my phone to scan it using uh, Genius Scan, or then airdrop it to my 
Mac and upload it into Notion, then I can shred the paper version. So I, I use it for things like that. It's really good then if I'm on the phone and I'm at work and I need to refer to an account number for some utility or whatever, I've got access to some information there. Um, yeah, and basically you can customize this almost how you want. The, the slight problem with Notion is it can be a little too flexible maybe. Um, so stick with it to get an understanding. Um, I'll probably do some more videos on Notion specifically um, in, in the future, uh, especially around note taking and using it for the Zettelkast and way of doing things. Um, but it's a really cool app just to have a central place that's backed up in the cloud to organize everything. If you want to share it with a team, if you're doing some productivity with someone else, again, it's really good there for sharing information, sharing ideas, sharing documents. Um, as a, as a business owner, I will use it to document maybe some processes, even for myself. If I, every year I have to do my tax return, for example, what's the process? Um, one of the things I like to do is just document what I did to, to help my future self. And uh, the more you do that, the easier things get. So there's a desktop app for this. I'm not showing the desktop app because it seems to conflict with two user accounts on the machine, but uh, for the most part, a desktop app is just a web viewer, essentially. Um, the only downside is people do complain that Notion is quite slow um, and uh, they've had some outages recently. So yeah, they're not the only ones doing this kind of thing, but um, they are very, very popular, especially if you're into like the productivity side of things. So that's Notion. And then finally, Flow State. This one's a fun one. Um, basically, it's instant death mode on your writing. Uh, the idea here is that when you run this, you say how long you are committing to write for. So if I start a session now, if, as I start typing, um, uh, this app is, is called Flow Set. And if I stop typing, it'll start fading out and I have to keep typing. And uh, if it fades out, I've got a 15 minute session here. If it fades out and I, and I get distracted and I stop, I lose the work. It's instant death, like the work is gone. And the idea here is that you really want to unlock flow and creativity and get your your stream of consciousness down. Forget the typos, forget the editing, forget perfection, just write. And I've used it a couple of times to seed um, my ideas around new blog posts. Uh, usually I do a five minute session, 15 minutes is quite exhausting. And what you do is you end up with forcing a first draft, a stream of consciousness, and that you can pull ideas out, you can pull the sections out, and it stops you overthinking things, it stops you um, uh, honing in on one part and kind of then getting overwhelmed because you've just, you're, you're focusing too, too much, and there's so much more you want to say. So it's a fun app. Um, I put it as number 13 on my list because it's very unlucky if... Uh, <laughs> if you want to use it and uh, you get to the, the final moments and um, somehow don't make it. Uh, you might get a bit of finger fatigue because you are slightly panicked and, and it will be stressful doing it. But it could also be a lot of fun if you have the right music, the right environment, the right uh, mindset to approach it. And you, you just want to ideate on something. You just want to get that stream of consciousness written down and then you can take that into your body of work whether you're going to create an article from it whether you uh, just want to get ideas and and let your brain just go really explorative in what it's thinking if you're writing a story then it's great for just keeping the flow going and not you know the edit is where perfection happens not in the first draft so there you have it those are the 13 apps that i use on my mac to help my productivity so i'd just like to take a moment to share what i'm working on it's a note-taking app called flowtelic and it's to help me manage my knowledge around the things i'm reading and listening to and watching and basically using that in a way that i can write more and publish better content essentially. So if this is something that you're also interested in, you want a note-taking app that helps you do your thinking, that helps you capture your knowledge, that helps you create more in a really highly discoverable, highly linked way, then do check it out. Go to join.flowtelic.com, 
drop your email address in and you'll get instant access to the app uh, on the confirmation screen of that. And then you'll get updates via email as to basically how it's going. I'm doing the whole building in public um, way of doing this. So yeah, welcome. And if that's of interest to you, follow along. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And if this is the kind of content you want to see more of, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch you in the next video.